Israel and Iran are not friends, which is a pretty big understatement. Israel has conducted countless airstrikes against Iranian sites inside of Syria, and Iran has retaliated through proxies like Hezbollah. And tensions between the two have likely never been higher, as Israel believes Iran is inching closer and closer to developing nuclear weapons. With that, the possibility of conflict between the two of them has grown. Israel has been adding a new weapon to their arsenal, the F-35 stealth fighter. They call it the Adir, Hebrew for Mighty One. So how will that change the dynamics? Will it live up to its name? But before that, our sponsor, NordVPN. Cybercrime in the US alone cost people an estimated $1 billion a day. And forget about big oil. Today, the biggest companies in the world are making trillions off of collecting and selling your data. The only thing you could do is protect yourself where you can. And NordVPN does everything they can to keep you safe. They have over 5,500 servers in 59 different countries. Protection for your mobile phone as well as your computer and protecting six different devices simultaneously, along with all the features that every VPN provider should have. So go and use my link in the description. You will get 70% off, plus an additional one month for free. And right now, for a limited time, every purchase of a two-year plan will get you a surprise gift, either a free one month, one year, or two year additional extended subscription to celebrate NordVPN's birthday. Go to nordvpn.com covert and use our coupon covert at checkout. And as always, they have a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee, so you'll get your money back if you are not happy. Again, NordVPN. Israel plans to purchase 50 F-35s in total, and has already received and operates about half them. They claim they have already been used in combat, likely in Syria, giving a major boost to Israel's capabilities. Its ability to remain undetected, under the right circumstances, doesn't allow the defender any warning or time to prepare. However, the aircraft isn't cheap. And that's the big problem with stealth in general. It's almost too valuable. It's extremely expensive, costing over $100 million each, so much so that you can hardly afford to lose one. Their high price means you typically can't buy and operate as many of them as you could with non-stealth aircraft. Also, losing one becomes a major propaganda defeat. Stealth has such a high notoriety, and there's a belief that they are the pinnacle of advanced technology and near invincible. That isn't true obviously, but still having one shot down is a major win for your enemy. The F-117 stealth aircraft being shot down in the late 90s, for example, is still talked about today, and still spawning countless memes. That propaganda value is huge. A lot of modern military technology and weapons have never been, and might not ever be used in combat. So all they have is their reputation, their deterrence value. And finally, you run the risk of it falling into your enemy's hands. The F-117 again, for example, was quickly retrieved and studied by other nations. A few years down the road and any technological lead you had over your enemy could vanish. And this has been seen happening throughout the history of warfare. Gunpowder, for example, originated in China. Through a series of events and battles over a few hundred years, the technology made its way into the Middle East and then into Europe. But today, that turnaround time is exponentially faster. So there's a risk in using stealth right now. You want to use it only when you really need it. There were several media stories, all referencing the same Kuwaiti newspaper, that three Israeli F-35s in a quote test mission flew to Tehran, the capital of Iran, and returned, and that it was never detected. Then that, in response, Iran's Supreme Leader Khomeini fired the commander of the IRGC and the Air Force chief. However, this seems extremely unlikely. First, if Iran didn't detect it, then how would they have known about it to then fire people? Also, a round-trip flight from Tel Aviv is over 3,000 kilometers, and that's in a straight line, which they almost certainly could not have flown for political reasons, so it likely would have been a lot longer. Even if the F-35 flew that straight path with no weapons and external fuel tanks, it might just barely make it. But even then, they would be flying over hostile airspace, unarmed, with little fuel to spare to run and get away if detected. Now there was reports back in 2012 that Israel might be planning on using an airbase in Azerbaijan as a staging point. But satellite imagery shows that that base has not been upgraded or improved to accommodate F-35 since. Now it is possible that Israel has another secret agreement at another base, maybe even in a different country that's nearby to land and refuel from, but it still doesn't make sense risking discovery of a secret site just for a simple quote test flight. Also, we know Iran was able to detect, track, and bring down the RQ-170, which almost certainly has a lower RCS or is just more stealthy than the F-35. And finally, it's just way too risky. Why would you ever risk your most valuable, newest, most advanced aircraft in a test mission? Anything could go wrong with the plane. The engine can fail while flying over Iran. Just too much risk. But with all that in mind, the F-35 does offer Israel an edge over Iran, at least in the air. Regardless if you are Iran, Israel, or even the US, 
Going up against an enemy with stealth aircraft is extremely frustrating and frightening. A non-stealthy fighter could be detected well in advance, while it's still far away, giving you time to prepare, but not with stealth. Their reduced radar cross-section size means you are not going to be able to detect them until they are much, much closer. Too close for comfort. And that's what stealth does. It doesn't make them invisible, just smaller. I mentioned this example before, but you can easily see an automobile at, say, 300 meters or 1,000 feet away. However, something much smaller, say an ant, you will not be able to see at that distance. It isn't until it's much closer that you will be able to see it. The same is true with stealth aircraft. A radar can still see or detect them, however at much shorter ranges. And that makes things extremely difficult for a defender. An F-35 isn't going to be able to fly directly over Tehran undetected, but it could possibly get close enough undetected and launch standoff range weapons, like Rampage or in the future, the Spice 250 glide bomb. So the question is when and how Iran could detect it. In general, lower frequency radars are able to detect stealth at longer ranges than higher frequency ones. So early warning radars Iran operates, if they're positioned in the right path, could spot the F-35, like Nebo or the P-18, which actually was the radar that detected that F-117 that was then shot down. The problem with these lower frequency radars is that they are extremely large, typically not very mobile, and are not precise. You will know that something is in a general area, but not enough to guide a missile to but it's good enough to scramble interceptor aircraft to go fly out to the area and find it. If you are Israel, you would want your aircraft to avoid detection altogether. F-35s can carry air-to-air -air missiles along with bombs, but not enough to get into a protracted aerial fight. A better solution might be to try to quickly take out those early warning radars in your path. Israeli F-35s will be able to carry eight of those Spice 250 glide bombs, so they could use a few to eliminate any radars they can't avoid, and then continue on to their target. Air defense systems, like Iran's domestically built Bavar 373 and Russia's S-300 are still a threat, but at a reduced level due to that stealth. But again, as we saw with the F-117, you can't count them out completely, nor can you completely rely upon stealth 100% to protect you. So Israel's F-35s definitely give them an edge, but not without their own problems. Stealth is a tool, one of many. It's not the be-all end-all. Some countries, like the US, seem to be putting a lot of their eggs all in one basket with stealth which might not be the best play, but only time will tell.